वेलकम टू थिंक इन पॉडकास्ट सीरीज द काउटिले स्कूल ऑफ पब्लिक पॉलिसी We want to be a trillion dollar economy. What's going to happen to Andhra Pradesh is we will be a trillion dollar economy, and we hope to be the first state to reach there. As a state, Vishakhapatnam, the biggest challenge is we are reaping the benefits of policies that were taken 20 years back. All our alliances in the past have been in the interest of the state. We believe that strong coalition. I think public policy is always uh, various taxes that's been levied on them. It's been quite ridiculous. So hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Think In podcast. Today me, Rishabh Borkar and my co-anchor JD are delighted to welcome Mr. Nara Lokesh in the studio. Hello sir, how are you doing? Good, thank you for having me. So my first question to you sir, general, uh, how does it feel being in Cotilla School of Public Policy and uh, what are your views o- about public policy in general? It brings back old memories of my college days and you know it was an amazing experience interacting with a few of the students and of course the faculty and i got a chance to talk to them about various issues related to primary education and that's something that's been very uh, dear to me especially after the padyatra you know as students uh, you have lot to uh, uh, you know achieve and uh, you can contribute back uh, to society uh, much more and i think public policy is always uh, underplayed because the, f- mo- the fundamental impact that it can have on society is far reaching and that's something that's really exciting and i'm looking forward to interacting with the uh, with all the students today yes. you have an exposure in india and usa as well uh, and when it comes to india i think india should more progress on uh, policy making schools in, in uh, i think what do you feel about that no, absolutely i mean even as a policy maker in the past when we used to come up with new policies there would always be unintended outcomes I mean, i'm not too yes. sure whether you, you've read the book free economics and i would recommend you read that because yes. every policy has an impact and it takes a, a decade or two that's one two policies also have to upgrade and uh, and governance also has to improve and the biggest challenge is we are reaping the benefits of policies that were taken 20 years back but we are not doing anything new to take india from where we are to being not a 5 10 trillion dollar economy so that's where i think public policy will play a very important role and as youngsters you know, more and more people should be part of this entire journey speaking about policy i would like to highlight uh, your leader mr uh, chandra babu naidu spoke about the vision 2047 and uh, where do you see andhra pradesh in this vision 2047 so mr naidu is uh, known as a visionary leader uh, he is the person who said vision 2020 for the rest of well andhra pradesh and today hyderabad has reaped uh, that benefit so as andhra uh, uh, now the divided andhra pradesh uh, we want to be a trillion dollar economy and we believe it's not just about it but it's about all the sectors so it could be the port led economy it could be the manufacturing led economy agri agri allied like dairy fisheries is going to play a very important role and yes it will play a very important role in andhra's growth so what you see uh, what's going to happen to andhra pradesh is we will be a trillion dollar economy and we hope to be the first state to reach there saying that we'll be a more diverse economy will be a very diverse economy a diversified economy where across sectors we're going to draw in investments so as every state erstwhile we were 13 states uh, each state had a focus area so we said anantapur will be automotive manufacturing chittur will be electronics manufacturing kadapa will be sports so we had a very clear focus direction and then we w- not just wanted to bring one company or a set of companies but the entire ecosystem so that can make it very vibrant and we can create talent that's actually required by the industry Telangana boom because of IT revolution brought by Mr Naidu and then thereafter state has bifurcated and and in the bifurcated state you have uh, led the IT as an IT minister and the situation has been changed thereafter and if you are going to assume power in the upcoming general elections what is the assurance you are going to give that uh, IT in Visakhapatnam is going to be on par competitive with uh, cities like uh, Bangalore and Hyderabad i think uh, it's not just about competing with hyderabad or bangalore and our agenda is we need to have a unique competitive advantage yes. so uh, as well when we were in government uh, we said we're going to use big data uh, data centers uh, ai and ml as the focus area and that's where we inked an agreement with adani yes. to do the world's largest renewable energy dependent data center 
Of course, the project didn't go anywhere after the new administration came in. But that's a project that we're going to bring back. So with that as a focus, we want to create a new set of jobs. So it's no longer about the generic programming jobs that uh, we're going to do. So we have to move up. And as a state, Vishakapatnam is well positioned to deliver that. But saying that, see, Vishakapatnam, our focus has been pharma, IT, and medical devices manufacturing. So that will continue to be our focus in North Andhra. But rest of the Andhra will be agri, fisheries, manufacturing, electronics manufacturing, automotive manufacturing. The blue collar jobs are, born, are going to be created. In a diverse approach. A very diversified, yes. So as we spoke about uh, different states and its competitiveness, I would like to ask you, uh, the political dynamics is also rapidly changing. You know, uh, your party was in alliance with the United Front, with the uh, National Democratic uh, uh, Alliances as well, and with the cooperation with Jan Sena now. I would like to ask that uh, amidst all these new alliances, don't you think uh, ideological politics or value system takes a hit? See, uh, as Telugu Desam party, our agenda is Telugu speaking states. So it could be Andhra Pradesh, it could be Telangana. Our agenda is very clear that these states have to develop. And if you look at all our alliances in the past, have been in the interest of the state. So it could be United Front, it could be NDA, it's been the interest of the state. And major policy uh, decisions or liberalization, if you look at telecom, uh, airports, ports, uh, roadways, was all done during NDA, where Mr. Naidu had played a very important role with uh, Vajpayee ji. So uh, we believe that we have a role to play. And we believe that strong correlations are good for the country. If you look at our growth rates, where we've had strong correlations, we've had, we've had high growth rates. Major reforms have come through strong correlations. I believe strong correlations enable uh, the voices of different states to be heard better. And I think that's going to be very, very important because India is very diverse. You know, what Bihar needs is different from what Andhra needs. It's different from what Telangana today needs. So I, it's important that all our voices are heard because no one political party can represent everyone's voice. And that's my view. As the question has raised about alliances and when it comes to alliance with BJP, NDA in 2014 to 2019, and are you uh, satisfied uh, with the alliance and the deliverables uh, that they deliver to the state in that particular tenure? Well, I believe that 80% uh, of whatever our ask was, was delivered. So if you look at Mandrega, uh, you know, Andhra Pradesh uh, is about 4.5% of India's population, but we drew close to 14% of Mandrega budget. And various other centrally sponsored schemes, we got devolution of funds. Yes. Because we are a very active yes. state, we are a hyperactive state in some sense. But then there were issues, you know, there were, during the bifurcation, certain promises were made to uh, now Andhra Pradesh, and those promises have not been kept. And that's been a continuous fight for us. So if you look at, though we have only three Lok Sabha MPs, uh, all three have been fighting on th that the, uh, the promises made should be delivered. And you successfully completed the Padayatra Yogalam. And what are the insights and the concerns that you uh, got on the grassroots level? I mean, concerns are across board. I mean, every sector has their own set of challenges and they are looking towards the government on easing it out. So if you look at like lorry owners, right? If you look at green tax or various taxes that's been levied on them, it's been quite ridiculous. Then, you know, other side, you have a lot of youth who are looking for jobs and that's been a huge challenge. Prevalence of drugs and especially marijuana has been a huge challenge in Andhra Pradesh. And uh, the Andhra Orissa border has become the hub for growth of marijuana. And as a political party, Telugu Desam Party is very clear that any form of drugs is not good for society. Yes, yeah. So we don't believe in li liberalized models. I mean, we believe in only one model, which is say no to drugs in any form it is. So drugs uh, and its challenges, because I met a lot of mothers, I met parents whose families have been affected by drugs. And then lack of jobs. You know, today we've educated so many people. And the, the ripe, you know, the demographic dividend is there to reap, but they don't have jobs. Yes. So the single agenda that I believe, even when TDP comes back in the next three months to power, is give industrial policy to all, everyone. You know, it could be a, a startup to a mega industry. Say that here's a white paper, you, you, you write what you need from us. And in the bottom, I'll write one number, which is the number of jobs you need to create based on your ask. And I'm going to monitor you on a, uh, in a twice a year basis, saying create jobs. Because if we don't reap this demographic dividend, which China has successfully has done, we're going to have serious problems as a state and as a nation. Yes. 
So, sir, coming to a quite a sentimental question, actually, uh, during Mr. Naidu's arrest, uh, what were the sentiments of the grassroots TDP cadres, the anger, the anguish that was there? And uh, I found a trend that the national parties and the national politicians were not that vocal and were quite reticent in expressing solidarity with the leader. What are your views on that? If you look at it, uh, all major national leaders did express solidarity. Definitely, uh, national leaders from BJP and Congress yeah. have stayed away from the issue. But all regional party leaders have, mm -hmm. who have a say have definitely expressed their solidarity. Uh, from Telugu Desam Party cadre and public at large, typically when a politician is arrested on corruption charges, every week a new scam is another. And that's typically been the trend. But with the arrest of Mr. Naidu, all the good work he's done to the, uh, you know, the states and the nation came on. It's not that you know, protests were happening, peaceful protests were happening in Andhra, but it happened in uh, all across India. Yeah. It happened in close to 100 countries across the world. And if you look at the gratitude concert that happened in Hyderabad, I think fundamentally moved the cadre, the party, the leaders that, yes, as a political establishment, we've made amazing impact in people's life. And whatever decisions that we've taken, policy decisions we've taken is for that. And it just reinforced that we need to work harder. We need to do, we need to take a lot more decisions. So it's been very clear for us. Definitely, uh, 53 days uh, were a very tough time, a trying time for us uh, politically and as a party. But if you look at it, Telugu Desam Party is unlike other regional parties. Yes, we are single leader led. But then we are also, we are like a university. Like how Kautalya is creating uh, public policy students and uh, future leaders. We do that. You know, village party presidents, mandal party presidents have become deputy chief ministers in Telugu Desam Party. We are a university. All the, the first and the second uh, Telangana chief minister is from Telugu Desam Party. So we are, we do create leaders and that's our habit. So if you look at it in the absence of Mr. Naidu, politically we fought well. And I think that's something that's very unique to Telugu Desam Party. It's unlike uh, uh, other regional parties. I'd sure. like to take you to some uh, humor hints. Like uh, recently in Padhyatra, you mentioned about this red book. What could be the reflection of that red book? Well, uh, off late, I think it's caught everyone's imagination. It's quite clear that uh, everyone's talking about it. People have been pr uh, gifting me uh, paintings, have red book also in it. So the red book is aimed at uh, taking down names of officers, uh, politicians who have broken the law. And I've been very clear that anyone who's broken the law in the last five years have to pay a price for it. Because it's the responsibility of everyone. It could be the politician, it could be the bureaucracy, to follow the law, to implement the law. But what's happened now is that everyone's taken it for granted and they've gone overboard. And that's what's creating a problem now in Andhra Pradesh. So that's something that we're quite serious about. Tomorrow we need to have a judicial inquiry so that we need to stop this uh, political interference and pressure in every, you know, in every walk uh, of life. And unless we put a full stop to that, as a state, we're not going to progress. And uh, when it comes to capital of Andhra Pradesh, it has been a big question mark. And if you're going to assume power in 2024 general election, and what could be the assurance that you're going to give for the people of Andhra Pradesh regarding Amaravati? No, our stand has always been clear. Uh, one state, one capital, but decentralized development. And that brings me back to my original subject, which is, Every district should have a focus. We have to build the ecosystem. We have to build the infrastructure, training, and so on and so forth. So that it's not just the capital region or capital developing, but rest of the state equally, if not developing more. So if you look at a track record, investments in Andhra Pradesh did not come to Amravati. Kia didn't come to yes. Amravati. Foxconn didn't come to Amravati. TCL didn't come to Amravati. Uh, you know, Adani data centers didn't come to Amravati. MedTech Med Zone didn't come to Amravati. They've gone into different parts of the state. That's why if you look at it uh, from a per capita income perspective, the most backward states have actually done extremely well uh, during Telugu Desam party governance. So Amravati will be the uh, governance capital, no second thought about it. But yes, development will continue to be decentralized so that every part of the uh, state develops. So it's a wrap in this episode of uh, Think In Podcast. So it was quite an insightful session with you, speaking about uh, politics, policies, administration, and life in general. Uh, please do like, comment, subscribe for freshly brewed content. Thank you. Namaste and Jai Hind. Thank you for having me.